while you were speaking, what popped into my head, and then you mentioned it, is taxation. So uh, obviously there's been um, a lot of work put in by government on taxation frameworks for cryptocurrencies. Um, I believe it was in last year's filings where things really kicked off uh, in the States with uh, how taxation was going to work. But I would love to get your perspective on that. Tax is hard, right? Uh, it's very fluid and very complicated. It's in the United States, it's, you know, thousands and thousands of tax legislation code. And you have to have a real understanding of what you are transacting with and who. And is it a responsibility of the consumer to submit their taxation? Is it a responsibility of the corporate entity to submit your taxation? And what I think ultimately you're going to see is tax codes uh, need to uh, become uncomplicated. And there's, there's the two things that I know are true. One is land, right? We know the total circumference of Canada, and we know goods and services. Those are two absolutes. What I don't know is how much you make as a salary and how much you've gained in your capital gains. That's all you reporting in saying, this is what I've done, so now please tax me at that rate. But I do know where you live, and I do know that you're going to have to buy eggs, milk, and certain basic services. That is an absolute to feed yourself or to orchestrate yourself. And I think as it gets more and more complicated and government, governments need to take in funds to represent the community and to give social benefits, uh, I think the taxation code will simplify. And they'll tax on property and they'll tax on goods and services. And if you have too many people in New York, well, guess what? The way to push people out is increasing property taxes, and the density will suddenly move forward. If you That's a very want, effective way of doing it. If you <laughs> want uh, someone to buy goods and services, right, you either increase the cost of services or the cost of goods, right? So they'll save more. So the cost of goods go up. If you want to push people into none of it, well, guess what? It's zero taxable rate there, and you will say zero cost of goods, and you get to retain more money. Well, I, I'm pretty sure people will move there. Just as like what you've seen in the United States, this mass exodus out of, out of California and going to Texas or going to Florida, you know, what you're going to see is behavioral modifications through taxation and a simplification. And why do I see that is I think people like myself and people like yourself and working in global companies, you know, you want to work for Google now or you want to work for Apple. They're not limiting you working in, in San Francisco or in Toronto or in uh, London. They're saying, okay, plug and play. So you come into our office, you plug your port, you sign up your, your desk. We know you're working there. If you want to move to another city, they're still going to give you the same check. And what the governments are not realizing is that eight expatriates and, and working visas, those are the ways to correct fees. Those are the ways to incentivize through Airbnb. It's an absolute. If you're going to rent an, uh, an Airbnb, you tax it appropriately. If you don't want them there, you leave them. right? And I think those are the kinds of things that are going to have to happen over the next 20 to 50 years. Because... The fluidity of people now, the fluidity of information now, and the fluidity now of value transformation or value transfer is now broken down. What is the barrier of entry? Right? The barrier of entry is, n is, is now guns and weaponry. Right? That's the barrier of entry or whether you wish to be there. The barrier of entry now, even in the macro events of the Ukraine and Russia, for the first time ever, you're seeing corporations getting involved in the policies of what's happening. It's not just NATO or it's not just one country versus another. Corporations are saying, you know what? You're not doing the benefits of my people that work for me. I'm taking my business out of that jurisdiction until you follow the policies and procedures and guidelines. You know, 
And I think actually more and more corporations are going to be influential on the policies and procedures of the localized environment that they're in. And I think people are going to determine whether they want to be there or not because they can easily accumulate their assets and leave. Yeah. I, the idea of corporations and politics, I think that's been, that's a shift that's been occurring for a while now. They are definitely getting more involved, um, you know, for what they perceive to be the betterment of society, right? And of, for their employees and their communities. So it's not a bad move. Um, your idea around using tax to sort of, you know, shift or inform behaviors is really interesting. And I do agree with you that in order for this to work, taxation will need to be simplified greatly because with the way it is right now, with different rules, you know, depending on different uh, assets that you may own or where you live, it, it is very complicated. Um, I've actually seen a model in some other countries where they're introducing this idea of the government does your taxes for you based on all the information they collect because we're very digital. So, you know, CGI, for instance, reports my income to the Canadian government so they know what I make. Um, again, same with whenever I transact in my investment account, those financial institutions report that activity to the government. Um, that's one of the ways they, you know, for instance, keep track of your TFSA and how much allowable room you have. So when you go onto your CRMI account, you can actually track and see how much you can how much you can contribute each year. So from my perspective, the government pretty much has everything. You know, there's very very few things that they may not know. So this shift toward having them prepare your taxation just so there is no confusion and you know you'll you'll often hear stories about you know there being some conflicted information or something wasn't understood properly or conveyed properly and now it's causing an audit which can be a complete headache so if they're preparing your taxes for you based on because they have all this information that seems like a pretty good process to me and then you would of course review it um, and if there was of course anything wrong you would go ahead and you know have open up a line of communication with them to correct it but i i would bet that for the large majority of people their taxes are pretty simple and it would not be a big burden for you know for there to be sort of an automated tax uh reporting and filing process yeah i mean person's taxes are can be complicated or not complicated and every person's very different you're just working with one employer, then and, and that employer has the ability to submit on your behalf your T4, then certainly it's gonna be a two step process. But I also think that you're coming into a world now um, that more and more people are taking their own uh, efforts, uh, consultancy, advocacy. Uh, lots of companies are global in nature, so they don't have local offices, they're just utilizing the you know, the ability to hire people out of Waterloo. There's a whole bunch of engineers that are way cheaper in, in Canada than necessarily the United States, right? Uh, so they don't have a localized office, but the person's able to contractually bill their, their efforts. So it's more about the global nature of their taxation or their corporate tax or where they're actually getting their revenues from that is a level of, uh, a level of effort that governments are needing to deal with. But I'm saying you probably, because of all this transmission of global movement, that we're gonna have to simplify. That's all I'm trying to say here. Yeah, no, and I completely agree with you on that point. 